Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. I'm your host, Jerron Harrington, back to hit you with another video. Now, this week is going to be a pretty hectic week, mainly because our main story, the last one that we have to accomplish on our channel, is One Piece Rangers of the Sea, based on the Heroes of the Morphin Grid series. And today, we're going to be covering Part 4. Now, from Parts 4 to Part 9, we're going to have a lot of videos coming out for this week's upload schedule. A few days this week, we are actually going to be doing double upload days, and today just so happens to be one of them. The main reason is that we're just going to be tying up loose ends for a couple of other things here and there as we prepare for the big crossover storylines that are going to be taking place next week with both our Power Rangers anime series and our Marvel anime series as well. And just to give you a brief heads up, next week there are going to be four videos exactly. One on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday will be an off day, and then on Thursday and Friday we will have the crossover event. On Monday and Tuesday, we're going to be doing recap episodes. Basically what these are, are just two videos that are going to summarize all of the stories that are connected on the channel. A quick way to refresh you guys and catch up on everything, as there were some retcons that had to be made along the way. So that video is going to try to explain everything before we go into the main story. So if you have any questions or anything like that, that video is basically going to cover everything. So that will be on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm going to take off to be in preparation for the videos to be recorded. And then the main crossover stories will come out on both Thursday and Friday. And then following that, I am going to be going on a much needed break. About one to two weeks to be precise. The last two weeks of July. I'm basically going to be taking off. So I probably won't be back till maybe August at the most. Mainly because I've been working on these series of stories for well over a year now. And it's been a lot of planning, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of everything that's gotten us to where we are today. So that's just something to keep in mind. This week, next week, we're going to be pushing to the finish line. Then after that, I'm taking a much needed rest. But as always, I want to say thank you to everyone who supports PowerCore Productions and Podcastings. As always, I cannot do it without you. You make the channel grow, you make the core grow. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Nico Robin awoke from her crater. The area surrounding her was rather cold and chilling, as there was snowfall in every direction. With the clothing she was wearing, to say that she was cold would be an understatement. Although to be honest, Robin didn't like the cold weather so much. It reminded her of her loss. The loss of a friend, but even more so the loss of her people, the people of O'Hara. As Robin stood attempting to find a way to take shelter, looking for any solitude in anywhere that she could find it, the more she thought about her past, the more she thought about everything that led her to this moment. From the time that she could walk, for as long as she could remember, she was always on the run. Always fending for herself, always looking to survive. If there was one word that could describe Nico Robin, 
it was that she was a survivor. Almost to a fault. There wasn't an organization she didn't use, a connection that she didn't make. She did everything in her power to survive. However, that survival, it always came at a cost. Whether the people around her knew it or not, anyone involved with the one known as the devil child was always doomed to failure. The world government's relentless hunt to find her. The girl who dared to read of the ancient history. The girl who sought the poneglyphs. The girl that wanted to learn of the past. She was viewed as a heretic, an enemy to the world in every which way. That was why everywhere she went destruction only seemed to follow and now it had befallen the straw hat pirates. Just when it seemed as though they were so close, when she thought that she had finally found a family, that she had finally found a home, a place where she could belong, and then this happened. Her friends fought desperately for her, and she fought as well. But in the end, they simply weren't strong enough. They weren't strong enough to overcome the obstacles before them. And at that moment, Robin, she felt as though her spirit couldn't go on any further. And now she was on a wild goose chase for some relic of power. First, she wasn't sure if she would be able to find it or not. I mean, could she even trust Kuma? After all, he did mention he was a member of the Revolutionary Army. And what he said sounded plausible. But even still, what if this was the universe giving her a sign? After all, with everything that was going to be going on in Marine Ford... And everything that was soon to come. Maybe this was her chance to split. The world's attention would be primarily focused there. She could turn, move the other direction. Get a new name, start over, find a new life. But would that make her happy? She had been running for so long. Did she really want to continue down that road? The sleepless nights? Never knowing when and where? The enemy might come from always sleeping as though you're on top of a bomb a bomb of uncertainty of doubt and at any given second it could go off she remembered those cold nights those nights where every little sound set her off every few minutes always keeping one eye open looking around Always being wary of every trusting smile that came her way. Never knowing who was friend or foe. Never knowing when a secret CP agent. Or never knowing when those of the world government. Or those of the hired warlords. Or when that of Cypherpole. Never knowing when someday the person she gave her trust to. Might be the very same person that stabs her in the back. And to avoid that, Robin did a lot of the stabbing. Often times were there Hana Hana no Mi. But she had met Straw Hat Luffy. She met Roanora Zoro. She met Sanji, Nami, Chopper, Usopp, Frankie, Brooke. All of whom that had become her friends. All of whom had risked their lives for her. Any's lobby was proof of that. If anything... In her darkest of moments, they came to her aid. She knew that she could believe and have faith in them. But she couldn't afford to feel this doubt. But at the same time, she had no idea of where she was going or of what she was doing at all. That was until she saw a figure in the distance. It looked like someone who was small in stature. Maybe someone no older than five or six years old. As she made her way through the snow, the figure became more clear. A girl dressed in a winter coat with long dark hair and rather beautiful golden eyes. The young girl waved to Nico Robin, ushering her to follow. As the two of them walked and made their way, they would find the entrance of a cave, shielding themselves and hiding away from the storm. Inside was a small fire and some food cooking. Of course, Nico Robin had managed to keep some track of time, 
About three or four days had passed by from the time she was sent away from Saba Odi. And now that she was here, she was thankful that this young girl had been able to find her in her time of need. As the two of them sat around the fire, the young girl would move towards a pile of clothing, pulling out a blanket from Robin. Robin took it gratefully as the young girl handed her a cup with a warm drink. It looked and smelled like tea. It probably wasn't anything too fancy, but honestly, the warmness of it was more than enough. The young girl took off her scarf, revealing her face even further as she too huddled up near the fire. Robin, grateful for the young girl's help, would introduce herself and ask who the girl was. The girl would smile happily and say that her name was Trini and that she was a habitant of this island, an island that was always cold. Robin asked if there was anyone with this girl at all, if she had a mother or father, friends, family, anyone, but Trini explained that it was only her. She had been living here on her own for so long. Robin was confused by this. This young girl, there was no way that she could have survived on her own, not being the size she was. There had to have been some adult, someone here. Robin tried to figure things out, asking if there was anything else that she could know. The young girl explained that she truly didn't understand all of this herself. Her memories of the past and everything were quite vague. In fact, there was only one thing that she remembered, and it tormented her greatly. It was blurry, but it was a dream that she always had. It was a dream where she was surrounded by these other individuals, boys and girls alike. There was a boy in red, a boy in blue, a boy in black a girl in pink, and a boy in green. She remembered these individuals, and whenever she thought of them, she felt this great happiness, this overwhelming sense of peace and of security. But what truly plagued her to no end was the fact that no matter how hard she tried, she could never remember their faces. She honestly had no idea how old she truly was. She had no idea how she had gotten here. She had no idea what she had been doing for so long. She just knew basically how to survive and that was all. She didn't really know anything else. She didn't understand anything and she was afraid. To be honest, she was grateful that Robin had arrived because she was beginning to think that no one would ever come. Robin could see the tears starting to well up in the young girl's eyes. Robin moving over and sharing the blanket as she gave her a hug. She understood what it was like to be alone. To not have anyone be there for you. A feeling of loss and of not knowing where you truly fit in. If anything, Robin wanted to stay with this young girl for as long as she could. But then a growing sense of worry washed over her. She knew that she couldn't stay here for long, and that her time was limited. The young girl most likely understood this as well. She asked Robin what she was doing here in the first place, where she had come from, and just how it was she wound up on a no-place island like this. Robin would explain that she was a part of a pirate crew, her own friends, if you will. But then unfortunately they were separated and sent far away in different directions. And now she was desperately trying to find them and get back. However before she could do so there was something that she was looking for. A device if you will. A device with a key. A yellow key. The little girl wondered if she were looking for anything in particular in this cave. After all, it was the only one that she could find, and she wasn't sure if there was anything else for a good few miles. Robin thought this over for a minute, before looking deeper and realizing that the cave went a lot farther than she once realized. 
However, at the same time, she wasn't entirely sure if it was the best option. Sure, they could go looking into the cave, but there was no telling of where it would lead them. Maybe she'd find what she was looking for. Or maybe this cave would end up being the end for them both. But Trini was willing to try it. After all, the only reason she hadn't journeyed any farther was because, well, she didn't want to go alone. She wasn't sure what she'd find and she wasn't sure if she'd be able to come back. Robin promised that the two of them would go together. After using some spare clothing and bundling up, the two would make their way hand in hand deeper into the cave. As they walked, Robin and Trini would converse with one another. Trini was a bright individual. Despite being so young, she was rather learned. She was kind and a pleasure to be around. In fact, Robin saw a lot of herself in the young girl. As the two made their way deeper into the cave, it got to a point where neither one of them truly knew where they were going. But to be honest, it really didn't matter all that much. They just had this weird feeling like they knew they were going in the right direction. They would make decisions on which path to take and where to go. And they always accepted it. There was no feeling of regret, no feeling of worry. They felt as though they were right where they needed to be and that they didn't need to be anywhere else. Before long, the cave, it grew darker and darker. And the fire torches that the two of them held, it also became dimmer until eventually the darkness swallowed them whole. Their hands were furling clasped to one another, their voices being the only comfort that they had in the darkness. Robin could hear the sulking of Trini, and she asked if she was alright. Trini would apologize for dragging her here, for dragging her into this stupid mess. She knew that Robin probably had other places to go, and that she could be doing a lot more than being stuck with some stupid girl who didn't know anything about herself. However, Robin would reassure her in that moment. Letting her know that no matter what happened, everything was going to be alright. Because the two of them had each other. And honestly, that was all that they needed. No matter what, Robin was not going to leave her. They would find a way. Finding a way off of this island, no matter how long it took. Hearing these words, feeling reassured, it would give young Trini hope. As her heart began to be filled and overjoyed, the walls of the cave would start to illuminate, a golden yellow shining around them. It eventually became to a point where it shined brightly and they saw where they were standing. They entered into an opening within the cave. As the stones of golden yellow shimmered all around them, they appeared to be as bright as the sun. As they looked at each stone, they felt as though it were alive, as if it were living in one way or another. Until eventually they looked in the center of the room and they saw that there was one stone. However, this stone had no color at all. It was lifeless, like it didn't exist at all. And within that stone, there was an object, a coin, that had the emblem of the saber tooth. As Robin looked closely at the stone, as she held it into her hand, she was marveled by its craftsmanship and by its beauty. But at the same time, she had no way of knowing what it truly meant. What made this stone so different? As Trini got closer to the stone, she grabbed hold of it, and the stone slowly began to glow for her. It glowed to the point where it was as bright as the other ones in the room. However, as Trini held on to it, she could feel herself slipping. Robin saw in astonishment as the girl started to disappear. Seeing this, Trini would quickly drop the stone, her body reforming slowly but the stone losing its light. 
there was no way that it could be possible. But was this girl somehow connected to the stone? And was this stone somehow connected to their destiny? Trini thought about it as well. For the brief moment that she had held the stone, she regained something she felt she had lost. Like there was a piece of her that was missing. But she was scared. Robin held her hand once again, telling her that she didn't need to do anything like this. But Trini, on the other hand, begged to differ. She knew fully that whatever her fate, whatever it was, it was connected to this stone in one way, shape, or form. But she was also scared. She didn't know what was on the other side or what would be waiting for her. She was scared that if she accepted this, she would lose herself and truly be alone. However, as Robin took a hold of her hand and pulled her tightly into a hug, she promised that no matter what she decided, she would be here for her. And that even if no one else remembered, she would remember. These words of re-encouragement were all that Trini needed. She embraced Robin in a hug one more time, begging her to not forget, to never forget. And Robin promised Trini that she wouldn't. As the two held hands together, with a deep breath, Trini would take a hold of the stone as it glowed brightly as all of the others surrounding them. Trini would slowly disappear until eventually her essence faded from sight. A bright flash would then emerge and engulf the entire cave. Robin shielded her eyes. At that very moment, all the stones surrounding them were gone, including Trini's. Robin looked on in worry, wondering where it had gone. She didn't want to forget. She didn't want to leave Trini here like this. But in the center of the room, on the altar, there stood what she was looking for. The device described to her by Kuma. As she took hold of it, along with the glowing yellow key in hand, the opening of the cave was shown before her. Robin could hear the callings of the sea and she quickly rushed out, seeing that she was now on the coast, and that the winter that had engulfed them was now gone. She looked out into the ocean stretching before her, with the sun starting to rise. Robin would place the key inside of the mechanism, knowing that whatever her journey was, it had led to this very moment. Turning it, Robin would be engulfed in a golden yellow as she morphed and transformed into the yellow pirate ranger. But within her subconscious, what she truly saw was astounding. She saw on her left and on her right all of the yellow rangers in history. And standing before her, was the mighty Morphin Yellow Ranger with the power of the saber-toothed tiger. As the ranger removed her helmet, Robin would remove hers as well, seeing now a much older Trini standing before her. The two rushed and gave each other a hug as they embraced, happy that they had now been reunited and Trini happy that she was not forgotten but she found where she truly belonged. Now knowing that the two of them would always be together, Robin was now grateful and happy more than she had ever been at any point in her life. Trini thanked Robin for helping her, for being there for her, and for allowing her to find where she truly belonged. Now that the two of them were joined by the will of the morphing grid, they would never be apart. 
and they would always remember one another. Trini would then explain that this power was one that was passed down from generation to generation, and that now the mantle of yellow falled on Robin's shoulders. Trini would point in the direction that Robin needed to go, and that she would need to rely on the powers of those that had come before to aid her to get to Marine Ford, where her other allies were going to be. Robin asked how Trini could be sure that everyone was going to make it there, and Trini simply smiled, assuring her that their promise, their bond was something that could not and would not be broken. With that, Robin would find herself back on the coast once again. She focused and meditated, searching for a power, one that would allow her to travel a great distance safely, given her devil fruit ability. The belt buckle would open, revealing to her a new key. She would take it and place it within the morpher as she transformed into the Dino Thunder Yellow Ranger with the power of the Pterodactyl. With her wings now being outstretched from both her right and her left arm, Robin would lift her head to the skies above as she flew high amongst the clouds themselves, feeling a new sense of freedom wash over her, a freedom to conquer all that stood in her way. With her determination now reinvigorated, Nico Robin sets her sights as she looks to rejoin Luffy and her allies at Marine Ford. This concludes One Piece Rangers of the Sea Part 4 based on the heroes of the Morphin Grid series. As always, if you're a fan of today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcasting stats to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we will be continuing One Piece Rangers of the Sea based on the heroes of the Morphin Grid series, part five. But anyway, that's gonna do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.